Hi, Doug. Hi, Nikki. How are you? I'm good. 20 years in the furniture industry. How did, how did that start? Started with my mother, Ann Lockett. She founded the business 20 years ago. Um, but my family's been living in Asia for the better part of 40 years now. So I grew up as a child of expat parents. So I grew up in a household full of all of this wonderful antique Chinese furniture because my family had lived for many years in Hong Kong and Singapore. It started off as a, as a suitcase, uh, bringing back knickknacks from Northern China. And uh, now we bring in several containers a year of, of vintage and antique furniture. There's nothing more impressive than walking into a space, mm. someone's living area or a home that's been well put together, that's been well decorated. You can walk into a space and know exactly, like from the minute you walk in, you can say, oh wow, there's something special going on in here, right? A house has sort of a flow and an energy to it, right? And you get that feeling as soon as you, as soon as you set eyes on, you know, someone's, you know, uh, entryway when you walk into their home. Yes, but there's a lot of fear associated with it as well, of people walking in going, well, this is all a bit of a mess. This is a hot yeah. mess. I think things can be a hot mess and they can be really aesthetically pleasing and put together well. Can you run us through some core design tips or principles that people can apply when they're putting together their space? at the end of the day, you're going to be living with these pieces in your home. So you have to find pieces that, that really speak to you. Um, and so trust your instinct. That would be my first piece of advice. Second piece of advice <clears throat> that I would give is um, to, to collect slowly. If you have too many pieces in any one given space, it tends to overwhelm the room and your eye gets drawn to too many things at once. So my recommendation would be to sort of add slowly and sparingly and you'll end up buying better in the long run and you'll end up with a, a much nicer living space. So um, I think it's important to start off with pieces that you not only love the look of, but can also see yourself using. They, they have to serve a, a, a practical function as well. I think a lot of expats have come here to live and it may be their first exposure to Asian style furniture. So they're already going to have some of their modern pieces or whatever they've brought with them. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to fuse the two together? The way I would recommend doing that is if you have, uh, for example, very simple pieces in your home, you can get away with having a loud splash of color with an antique piece. You can have a bright red wedding cabinet, for example as long as what you have sort of supporting it around it are sort of more um, uh, muted tones or simple clean design lines, that sort of thing. If, you're, if your decor tends to be a bit more um, colorful or um, you have sort of a lot of artwork going on in your space, I would recommend choosing simpler Chinese pieces with sort of more elegant design features, um, more neutral tones, that sort of thing. Um, and we, we offer both of those, you know, sorts of looks here at China Collection. Yes, I saw that when I was looking at your, your Instagram, the pieces are really varied. You've got everything from kind of late 19th century through to Chinese boho chic. They're very, very distinct looks. Everything's certainly not uniform. So is that just a subjective, people gravitate to work towards certain looks and, and go from there? Yeah, styles and, styles and tastes change, right? So, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, everyone wanted bright, colorful Tibetan furniture, for example. Now the look tends towards more sort of neutral wood tones, stripped um, elm, pine, that sort of thing. And it's a very, it's, it's just a very popular look because you can dress it up with all sorts of different colors. You can accessorize it. I noticed also that you combine pieces together that are different wood tones. I would have thought that was an, a no-no, that everything has to match, but it's possible to, to mix them. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I don't think you want to have your entire house in sort of muted wood colors. Um, but yeah, I don't mind doing that actually. I'm layering different tones and different sort of wood grains and that sort of thing, textures. Um, I think that can be a, a, a really nice look actually. So. Okay. So, there seems to be a lot of flexibility in, in what can be done. Are there any no-nos? You said before, don't cram too many things into one space. Is there anything else that is a design 
antique Chinese furniture do not. I would say don't buy um, a piece of furniture that is going to be that is going to overwhelm a, a, a space. Um, I would say err on the side of buying a piece that um, is a bit smaller, and then you can always add elements um, to the space with sort of accessory items. Um, you know, stools, benches, chairs, that sort of thing. And as expats, there are people that are going to be moving back home. Can these pieces work well in homes in other countries? When we source our furniture, we actually buy pieces knowing that our clients are going to eventually be taking them back home with them. Mm -hmm. So we specifically try and source pieces that we know are going to suit more modern or contemporary decor. So we source from parts of China that are known for, uh, for elegant or simple designs in, in the yeah. furniture. I think a lot of folks um, are a bit worried when they, they sort of, they, they bought sort of five or six pieces of antique furniture and they're worried about how they're gonna incorporate them back home. Start slowly um, and build your collection over a period of, an, uh, over a number of years. Um, and then when you do return home with your pieces eventually, don't put them all in one room would be my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be to um, accessor. You don't have to accessorize a antique piece of furniture with Chinese porcelain, right? You can, you can mix and match things. So people can show you pictures of their space and I'm guessing you can advise on what would work and how it can work. Yeah, we, we have a lot of clients that come into the shop um, with specific you know, measurements, that sort of thing, wall spaces. Um, and we can advise them on what, um, what might look best in any given space. We have an, um, an in-house interior designer as well. I think it's important as expats, we've had this experience here in Asia, to have those pieces in the home that are there for life, that we can always look at and remember our time here. Thank you for sharing all your tips on how people can incorporate beautiful, Asian antique pieces with their current space so that it can be reflective of their journey as expats in Asia and people can come to your store in Juchia and have a look for themselves. Thank you so much. You're most welcome, Nikki. Thank you.